What is happening? Nick Pollock here, founder of Pitcherless, former college pitcher and pitching coach, here for another pitcher video breakdown. Today we're going to be talking about Frankie Montes and Tyler Anderson uh, from yesterday. See how did they have their success and what's going on with Frankie Montes. Uh, so we're going to start here with Montes going against the Blue Jays. Uh, this is the sixth inning. We're going to work through this and figure exactly how Montes is attacking these Blue Jays hitters. Uh, so first pitch, we got 95 inside, and if you're not familiar with Montes, what he does is he throws hard with fastballs, and he has a slider that he gets for strikes and a splitter he tries to put away guys with. It's a good mix. Generally, you want that fastball you can confidently throw for strikes. You want that secondary pitch you can get over the plate for strikes, and then you want a secondary pitch that you can get whiffs on. Montes has all three of those facets, so hopefully he can pull it off here against the Jays. First pitch here, way inside. He's trying to essentially jam... Uh, on the inside corner, trying to get Gritchick aggressive, maybe get himself out early. And by the way, I'm using MLB Film Room for this, so we're going to be jumping around with that. Uh, so 1-0 here. Uh, he goes with, all right, another fastball, 95 straight up. Okay, so Montez has that approach. Look, I miss 1-0. I'm going to attach the, attack the zone again with 95. That's supposed to be away. Goes up. Gritchick is aggressive, kind of saves Montez a little bit there. But so far, so good. I'm probably coming back at 1-1 with another fastball. That's probably what I would expect with Montes. Maybe he can throw in a slider here uh, to keep Grichik off balance. But the fact that he just swung through that heater means that Grichik can't really handle it right now. And and Montes has confidence with it. Nice slider. 90, though. Ooh. I think what happened there is Grichik was essentially saw the spin and just said, yep, not for me. I'm not really looking for them. looking for that fastball. Um, really nice slider. I know it's not the ideal location. But all Montes is trying to do is just get this pitch over the plate. Got it, 1-2. You'll love to see that. So now at 1-2, two, two, uh, two, and what I was saying before, you got to have a pitch for a uh, for a whiff, one pitch for uh, over the plate, and one pitch, of course, to throw like as a fastball over the plate for strikes. This should be a splitter, I would think, um, as he set him up for it. But it depends on how Montes feels the splitter. Let's see what he goes with. It could be also be a high heater. He does go with a splitter. It looks like maybe that was a slider. Uh, let's see. They call it. No, that was a slider instead. Uh, nice to see him, though, get, uh, get a whiff on a slider. Let's look at that one more time. This this is not a pitch that Gritchick should be swinging at. No, obviously, it's not that far in the batter's box. But I'm not exactly sure. I mean, this pitch, I don't think, started as a strike anyway. Um, Gritchick should have. That, that wasn't a, the best pitch. It should have been taken. Um, but Montes, I guess, got the strike out there. Not really the most dominant uh, at bat there. I mean, essentially what Montes did was, oh, come on. Don't be, don't be silly. Are you gonna, I hate this bug. There we go. Nope. MLB film room just, oh my God, really? You're going to do that to me. You're not even going to show me the video. All right. It's fine. Everything is fine. We're going to hope for the best here. There we go. So there's a the first pitch slider. Really good to see that. Like, essentially, with Montes, you want to be doing one of two things. You want to be either throwing fastballs for strikes in the zone or sliders right away. Establishing the slider 88 down and away. So, I mean, likely not going to swing at this. This is a free strike most of the time. Good stuff there from Montes. And now that you have him at 0-1, uh, uh, you can probably pound the zone with a fastball, especially considering you just saw 88 miles per hour over the plate. He tries to go with another one. So, that's actually three straight sliders thrown by Montes. I uh, one of them got a strikeout that honestly that was not a good pitch and I still can't believe that Gritch has swung at it swung at it. This is actually a more of aggressive one uh, at 01, which isn't terrible. I know you're seeing out of the zone. You're thinking, oh, you want to get to 02, but a lot of the times, like I was thinking, hey, I thought Montes was going to come back with a fastball there. Simeon could have been aggressive on that feeling in the 101 hole. He could have been thinking fastball along the outside corner here and go off of it. So not the worst slider I've seen guys swing and miss on this many a time. I, uh, but you know, Simeon has better play discipline than he used to, um, and takes that for ball one. And now I'm thinking, okay, you know, if, if I'm Montes here, I hope don't give me, <laughs> come on, you can do this. Okay, good. I, uh, at one, one, I'm imagining that Montes thinks, all right, I just missed on that slide. I'm not going to throw another one here. I'm, I have confidence in my fastball. I'm going to probably go another fastball or if he goes another slider, he probably might get a whiff. He's able to execute it really, really well. We'll see what happens. Gets a slider and he gets a swing. Oh, that's really cool. I got to say, that that takes a lot of guts, you know? You don't really see that too often. 
Uh, you obviously see the guys that throw like 45% sliders or so. One, one, who cares? I'll throw three sliders in a row. I have that much confidence in it. But Montes isn't someone I would necessarily say is that um, super reliant on that slider. It's more fastball first, slider second. And to see now, six inning, Montes can turn to that slider and say, I'm going to throw the first three pitches and I'm going to get two strikes out of it. That's really, really good. And that, I mean, look, you're thinking also, you see it in the in the bottom of the zone middle, and you think, mm, is that actually what a good location? And I'm going to say yes, because it's not what Semini is looking for. And that's a pretty sharp slider, too. Uh, it's not a hanger. Hanger would probably be a little bit higher up. Uh, and it's also really not the situation after two straight sliders. I don't think, I don't think uh, Semini was gonna gonna match that one. So now one two, I mean you can do a lot of really good things. I personally would go with heat now. I know you can get kind of cute with another slider. Um, I would go high heat. I mean you just saw three pitches, lower velocity. I uh, even if Semini is thinking of it, he's not ready to adjust to that heat. Um, that's what I would go with personally. And he does, and wow. Am I wrong? <laughs> Wait, let's watch this one more time. So, okay, so I like this one, two. You go with heat. Now, he's throwing it right down the middle. This is this is a terrible location of it. Still, I've seen guys throw right down the middle at 97 after throwing 90, 90, 90, and getting it blown by them. Semyon was ready for it. My, uh, too ready for it. Man, I mean, look, better location, you probably get a better result. But, yeah, props to Simeon. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have predicted that. So now, okay, I mean, you just saw Simeon just crush that. Uh, you got to not give him that. You, you got to move away from it. Uh, this might be the same pitch. I got to double check. No, okay, so, no, he gives him another fastball. This this time, tugging it far away. Uh, I think that's kind of a sign of Montes seeing, like, how much he just crushed that fastball. He's a little bit more afraid uh, as he really focuses do not throw it down the middle and then he tugs it over to the side so honestly the story of this at bat is hey you can get semi and out on on sliders so if i'm if i'm montes i'm going to slider here as he did but that's a bad one and you can see actually that's a bad one and semi and still fouled that off right like semi is pretty much saying like i am not going to get beat by your fastball so you know slider is a weakness here and that's a bad one you throw a good one you should get him there montes i uh, does he go back to it or does he go with a heater instead we'll see looks like they go fastball again and this is kind of close to the one that uh, that Semyon launched but this time Semyon just isn't quite on it maybe there's a little different sequencing on it maybe it's just a little bit higher up um that's interesting information though right like you're thinking oh okay he didn't crush that one that was more of the plate it does give montes a little bit more confidence to think like okay maybe now I can actually attack and put it in a good location and get that uh, and get that out. So let's see here. So now at two two again, he does try to get it up. Does go back with a fastball. But this time Semi is ready for it. And all three of these were pretty close to the heart of the plate. Nothing along the edges. I uh, and Semyon does take it for a red. Uh, that's unfortunate to see. Um, that was probably his actually his best fastball of the lot, even though it was a little bit lower uh, velocity. It was a little bit better location. Um, a little disappointing, but honestly, Montes had opportunities, and he just did not capitalize with a slider to get it done. Uh, so, all right. So now, once this bug goes away, I I can... <laughs> I, let's see here. All right, here we go. So now, oh, oh, you've got, uh, you got lefty up. Panic, you just pump a fastball, 94. Man, I mean, that's a pretty bad pitch. <laughs> that's supposed to be a way or not. Maybe he's thinking breaking ball, maybe he's just being passive, but that's a really good pitch to hit. Mondes should feel really happy that that just landed in for a strike. Uh, so now if I'm, uh, if I'm panic here, uh, I'm thinking, all right, I'm not letting that fastball go again. Uh, so I'm going to jump on it if I do get one. And that's right down the middle of 95. I don't know what the result is of this yet, uh, but this ain't good. That that's you got it. That's two straight fastballs. He just kind of threw in the middle of the plate there and panic. Good job on him. Yeah, lucky lucky for Montes. Gave it a good drive. Panic. I uh, oftentimes that can get a lot more beats. That's not promising whatsoever. Um, we got pickoff attempt that I do not care about. Uh, and then we have, okay. So that's Guriel. I would think 
first pitch. I mean, you just threw two bad fastballs. If I'm catching here, I'm like, all right, we gotta we gotta move you away from them. Maybe uh, throw something else. Hopefully, get you, your release point down. Or maybe your command better on that heater. Now he goes with a fastball. It looks like a sinker. It comes in, and that's a really good one, because generally with sinkers, what you want to do, you want to actually throw strikes with them. You want them to start in the inside corner and fall off. I I don't know if they have a certain book on Guriel being aggressive. But to see him swing quickly on that is a lot of information. I think you can throw a second one here and get another foul ball. Especially considering that Montes was able to execute that one. So I'm throwing another sinker here. Oh, we got a slider. And that's a really good one. Look at that. I, I know My head's in the way. But that's a really good spot. Down and away. I mean, also move in different directions. You have that one starting in the middle of the plate. It's going away from the batter uh and then you have the sinker going inside to the batter right i uh, gets the ground out here and that that's the uh that's the inning so big takeaways here i uh, montes a slider actually acting a little bit better than i i uh, you know th that's the kind of slider you do want to see from montes the one against gretchen whatever um four seamer needs a little bit of work uh from this inning i uh, wasn't commanded as well as you want it to be the sinker did work that last at bat against Guriel is really really nice from Montes uh, I didn't see a single splitter though and that's kind of annoying considering you had multiple chances to get a guy out with a splitter especially against Semyon uh where he was prepped for that fastball that's why you have the slider I'm oh, sorry the splitter it's a little frustrating to see that but yeah there there's Frankie Montes in a nutshell I think not facing the Jays that Montes should be able to build off of this I'm moving forward what we're going to go to now uh, is Tyler Anderson uh, as he almost no hit the Padres he had six frames no hit baseball we're going to look at the sixth inning right now we're going to try and understand what's going on with Anderson and the main takeaway is good command with his fastball and change up that keeps guys off balance for the most part with the breaking ball in there too those are the main elements of, of Tyler Anderson uh, and we're going to kind of look at that command and see if this is any way sustainable Uh, there's a leg hitch, and there's a changeup. He just kind of floats it in there. Um, I think it's a change. It could actually be the breaking ball. No, this, it is a changeup. Trust your instincts, Nick. Um, so uh, this is against uh, Jorge Mateo. He takes the first pitch, changeup away. All right, fine. Noth nothing too special there. I, what you generally can do now after setting up that changeup is to play off a of fastball speed. Change the speeds is generally what you're supposed to do. Um, the next step, if you think that the, the, the batter is going to be expecting that, then you can do actually another change up away. I think they're going to be pretty straightforward here and go fastball inside. That's it. Oh, well, that's actually looks like a cutter inside at 85. It is. So that's, oh man, that's even next level. <laughs> so if, right. If you're thinking, um, so if you're thinking then fastball inside, cause you just threw the change up away. Uh, you can take advantage of that, as, as Anderson just did. That's a really nice pitch. Um, yes, you're thinking, oh, he made contact. He kind of hit it hard and stuff. Like, no, that's off the plate. You already have the 0-1 count. Now he gets 0-2 because of that. That's a really, really nice pitch. That's uh, perfect. So now so now you have him at, at 0-2. Um, you can go back to a changeup away. You never give Mateo, who's you know not as experienced. And you might think, like, oh, well, he's going to be waiting for a fastball to hit. You can take advantage of that and just go back away with the changeup. As he did. And that's not even a good one. That's that's not a good one at all. But I think the change of speeds and the, the aggression of Mateo that you saw from that cutter, he wanted to hit that fastball, fouls it off. So you can take advantage of that uh, and get the swing and miss on the changeup. It's not a good changeup, though. I mean, neither of the two changeups he threw here. Those should be down here, right? These are up. Uh, a lot of good hitters will make the adjustment. They'll realize that it's a changeup and then keep it slightly farther back because all you need to do is just is just fling the bat out, especially up and away uh, for this changeup. And uh, Mateo should be pretty upset himself to strike out on that one, honestly. Um, that's got to be down. Come on. Come on, bug. Go away. Go away, bug. You're killing me. You're killing me. All right. I uh, Here we go. So, uh, now we have Grisham going up. You have a lefty. So, I would think if that cutter is working for Anderson, he's going to try and throw it away here. That's a fastball away at 90 and 
Good to see a foul ball here from Grisham. That means, again, he's trying to be aggressive early. You can take advantage of that. So now that you've set up this 90 miles per hour fastball, which is really good. That's a debatable strike there. Uh, I'll, I'll take that all day for a first pitch. Um, you can then play off of this with cutters down and away. Uh, so I wonder if that's what they're going to try and do here. Oh, he's going back inside. Love this aggression. Now you can actually even see. So yes, it's inside. And he's re reacting like this, but you can even see Grisham leaning. He's still staying in on this. He thinks that maybe it, it might go away back over the plate, and he gets eaten up. He gets leans in and comes back. And what that tells me is, that, oh man, I'm upset because he's not swinging at this pitch any day. If I'm able to execute that right. Uh, he's still looking away. He thinks it isn't going to be that cutter away, like I was saying. And that was a really good surprise pitch. That was a really good pitch call. It's just uh, I didn't quite execute it. So that's that's more information you're getting, right? You saw the aggressiveness on the way pitch and the uh, the uh, the reluctance or not the eye for an, uh, not for an inside pitch, right? You're not looking for it. So I, now it's a good question. Is Trent Grisham going to adjust now thinking inside corner? Or is he going to stay away or not? And you got to make a choice here. Um, I don't know. I, I would probably try and go back in and, and if I'm Taylor Anderson, I'm going to say like, no, I want to execute that up and then pitch. I want to see if I can do that. But nope, they're going away. What do I know? Uh, he tries to do that cutter away that I thought the second pitch was going to be. Floats it up. And Grisham, man, that's the pitch you got to hit. That's the one. That's floating right down into your wheelhouse. Like the two wheelhouses are up here and, and right here. And that's, ugh. you want that one back. Let's do that again. Ah, oh, so you can see that the Anderson was looking heater. He's slightly, slightly on his front foot. And he tried to make that adjustment. And he just couldn't do it in time. So, so now you have, uh, now you have one, two. And I don't know. I feel like you can probably freeze him with the fastball away now at this point. Because, to Grisham, he doesn't know if that was intended to be an inside corner pitch or down and away. Uh, so he might be still thinking, okay, I protect this inside corner. I might be going fastball away here. Try to stun him. That's what they try and do. 92, and you see Grisham doesn't take it. So I don't know if he was if that's more of just like I have such a good awareness of the zone, or maybe just that wasn't where Grisham was looking. I uh, what I would love to do, and you don't see this too often, is lefty and lefty changeups. Which is, oh man, lefty and lefty changeups are so brilliant and they can do so well. Uh, we just don't really see it enough. But considering you just established this 92 mile per hour fastball, I would hope that you can get this changeup down here. And I really do think you'll get Grisham swinging out of his shoes. Uh, we'll see where they go with now, though. This is, a, this is a very interesting one. Looks like they're going to go fastball back in. Woo! So we got even like a little hitch here from uh, from Anderson. I think he lowered his arm angle even too. Yeah, a little bit. And he ate him up inside. Oh, man. Look at that. So Grisham just had no idea where this was going to go. I didn't know what the sequencing was going to be. I, I, I was pretty lost too. <laughs> and that's a really nice pitch up and in. Yeah, Tal Anderson earned that strikeout. And that's the pitch that he wanted to throw earlier in the count at 0-1, right? And he missed it. And it's pretty cool as a pitcher to be like, all right, I'm going to execute the pitch I tried to do before. That was cool. I like that a lot. All right, so now lefty up. What we saw before, sorry, right-handed up, right-hander up. What we saw before was a changeup away. He missed twice on those. And honestly, if you throw those to Fernando Tatis, he'll take advantage of it. It looks like here I'm going to cheat here, and I'm going to think it's going to be a fastball inside. Generally effective lefties. What they do is they go fastballs inside, up and in, all day. Like, if you can do that, think of James Paxton and his no-hitter and stuff. Like, that's how Tyler Rogers, sorry, Taylor Rogers is getting his outs this year. Tyler Anderson, if you can do that effectively, I mean, that's why you get starts like this. That's a bad one. That is a bad one. Oh, my. That is an absolute mistake. Uh, and let's just kind of look at how Tetsi swings at this. So he's a little late. I think he's thinking off speed because he's Tatis. And he doesn't quite get there in time uh, because because he's thinking that he's trying to stay back for, say, a changeup or a slider here. Um, guessed wrong. Oh, man. That could have been damage. And I think Tyler Anderson knows that. Now, that's pretty convenient, though. You've already set up a way now accidentally. You can, you can go back in and execute the pitch that you wanted to execute. 
And he tries to, and he does a decent job. This isn't a bad pitch here. Um, it's worse if it was actually away than his middle uh, when it's up. Uh, and Tatis, once again, is kind of showcasing, I'm not ready to hit your heater. So now the question is like, is are we going to believe that Tatis is going to adjust his approach? Because then again, fouling two off like that is showing I am not, I am not ready uh, for your fastball. I'm more on your secondary stuff. So is Tyler Anderson going to give him that, or are we going to just keep feeding the stuff to Tatis? And honestly, if I'm Anderson, I'm going to keep going inside. I'm going to do another fastball up and in. I'm not going to give in to that secondary pitch. Oh no. Okay. Well, he overthrew that. We can't. We can't make anything on that. That's just a waste. So it might as well have never happened that pitch. So do you go back and try and execute the same one, or do you go fastball up and in? I would honestly, I would like to do fastball up and in, but I think they're going to change up away. And Tatis is ready for it. I mean, it's hard to tell. This is a pretty easy take, so I can't really give too much credit for Tatis. I'm, I'm curious if like, it landed here, if Tatis would have swung. I'm willing to guess that this wouldn't have gotten Tatis because I think that this is his entire at-bat is like, I am going to be focusing on the secondary stuff. I will say, after throwing two, that clearly if you bounce it like that, it's not a fastball. So Tatis knows that was supposed to be secondary. Then you have this other one, this changeup here, that is also a miss. That's 2-2. Two, two. I'm adjusting now if I'm Tatis. I'm going, okay, two secondary pitches. You missed on both. Now we focus on a fastball. That's what I would be doing if I'm him. Oh, trying to go up and in. No, he's going to go. See, there it is. And that's, oh, love it. Right? So there's that mentality. If I'm Tatis, I'm saying, look, he just missed twice with it. He's not going to go with it. the third time. He's going to adjust back to the fastball. So Tatis changes his approach. And he's thinking, I mean, they even deke him out. They even, like, know this. You know, they, they do a little deke of, like, up and in. Just kidding. It's a way. And they get him. Swinging out of his shoes. It didn't. It, oh, I love that. I think that's incredibly well done. I mean, it takes brass. You know, like pitching is, you got you to gotta have these moments where you take, you know, you got to have confidence. You got to earn it. Uh, and, and Tyler Anderson certainly earned it here. That's lovely. I love that. So, I mean, the, so the main takeaway for me here is Anderson did earn these outs. He did make mistakes. They weren't taken advantage of. And because of that, it gave him the opening to to execute good sequencing and good locations to uh, to get the outs in this inning. Uh, but that's going to do for this edition of uh, the Pitcher Video Breakdowns. Remember, if you want to be a part of this, if you want to suggest them and have your request featured here, you got to go to twitch.tv slash pitchless. I stream every single Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 8.11 a.m. Uh, I start doing these at 10.15 uh, Eastern time, so definitely tune into that. Um, and, you know, we just talk about pitching and, uh, and all your fantasy baseball teams. But that's going to do it. So, as always, may your babips be low and your strikeouts high.